PropStop.com and this is the second in our series of explaining different embossing and die cutting machines. Today we're going to be talking about my Big Shot. I love my Big Shot. I use all of my machines for different things and today I want to show you what we're going to do with this one. Again, we're going through embossing folders and all the different embossing folders from the different companies and how you'll use them on your Big Shot. This one is the only downplay to the Big Shot I have is this multi-purpose platform because I have limited space and so to have to fold these in and out sometimes drives me crazy. But what I've done now is I've put this in my own little work surface space and made sure that I had enough room. So what we're going to do today again is just work with embossing folders. So when you're using this for embossing folders, as you'll see there are tabs, let me flip it around here for you, there's tabs 1 and 2 and then there's a space where you have no tab. That's what we're going to do today. We're not going to use any tabs. I know I'm flipping this around a lot. So you're going to just use this bottom part with two of your cutting plates and that's how we're going to emboss. You know what? Let's just get started. Now the first folder I'm going to use is from Cricut. It's one of the cuddle bugs. This one's called the James Set. Now unfortunately over the years that I've been collecting embossing folders, I don't have all of the names of the particular set. I know the company but maybe not the particular set and I've just grabbed some different ones to kind of share with you and I'll show you the card that I made. So now again for the cuddle bug folders you're going to use just the plain platform no tabs at all. You're going to put that in one of your cutting plates and we're going to put your paper inside your folder and then as I've said many times and I'll continue to say make sure you go open into the folder in first. You get a much better impression. Then we're going to put the other cutting plate right on top and then we're going to give it a pull, push through and just let her pull right on through there. And there we have a wonderful embossing. It's perfect. Now let me show you the card that I did. I actually pulled this idea off and I believe it was Jennifer McGuire. Maybe not. I forgot to write the name. Anyway, look what they did. Another way to use your embossing folder. They took each strip of these like little arrows and cut it out, of di embossed different colors and cut out different little strips. So I did that. Now if you look real close behind here, you'll see some specks of like paint. So what I did is I just put little daubs of some of my Ranger paint on there and clicked it around and just to kind of give it a background. So anyway, you cut each little strip of the arrows, you adhere them down, I stitched it on my sewing machine, just crazy stamped and made a little tag out of some scrap paper, added some sequins, and I called it a card. Just another easy, quick way to use your embossing folder. And again, that was using your cuddle bug folder with your Big Shot. Let's grab the next one. Alright, now the next one we're going to be using is from Spellbinders. It's called Embossibilities. And again, you get two for the price of one. When you have it folded this direction, you'll get some tires on this particular one. And you can also fold it this direction, and then you'll get the little footprints. Now, here's the kicker with this one. I cannot get my machine to work with no tabs and the two plastic, uh, the two cutting plates. So I've messed around with it a bit and this is what I came up with that works on my machine. So I advise you, when you're using the embossibilities, they're not as pliable maybe as the other ones, so kind of play with your machine. You know, they're all calibrated different in here, so some of the rollers are really, really tight and some aren't so tight, so kind of play with it and see. And I'm going to stick a couple hunks of paper on there. My paper's inside the folder and then I'm going to have both both one and two tabs up and only one cutting plate and we're going to stick it through there. It's a little tight. If it's too tight, of course, I would have taken out a piece or two of that shim paper that I used. And what's really cool, if you want to look here, this is pretty fun. I was able to actually get embossed on this piece that was on the top. But my goal was to get this one. Look at that embossing. How cool is that? Now let me show you the card that I made. So let me repeat that. When you're using the Spellbinders Embossibility, you're going to use tab 1 and 2 on your mat, one clear cutting mat, and a couple pieces of shim cardstock. And here's the card that I did. See the embossing right there? Isn't that cool? And I just did a little bit of ink to paper kind of technique. And this is a Tim Holtz die cut up here. And this is a stamp from Versus Rubber Stamps. So there you go. All right, let's do the next one. Now, our next one is from Couture Creations. And again, this time, let me just re-explain. You have the two tabs, tab one and two. We're going to open those up on this one. One of your cutting plates down. Your paper inside your folder. Open end goes first. Layer on there. Your other cutting mat on top. And run her through. And 
there you go. And this is really embossed nicely. I really love the Couture Creations folders. They just really give you a good emboss. And here's the card I did. So you'll notice in the background is my piece of embossed area, and I took one of my Couture Creations label dies and cut that. And these are from a Heartfelt Creation Flowers. So there you are. Let's go to the next one. Now this one is from Lifestyles. Same thing. No tabs. Your main, what do they call this? Surface here. I don't know what they call that. Platform. Let's call it a platform. One of your cutting mats open in first. Another cutting mat. Even though we're embossing, they call them cutting mats. We'll roll her around. And we have, again, a wonderful embossed image on there. Check that out. Now here's the card I did. How cute is that? So there's my embossed part, and this was a shaped card. So what I did is I put some washi tape underneath there. I did my Naomi Knot trick, which there are other videos out there on Crop Stop. Look up Naomi's Knot. You're going to love that technique. Put myself a little ribbon on there and a sentiment, and we called it a card. Let's do the next one. Now this one is from Sizzix. This is one of the Tim Holtz. I think they call it alterations. I forget what he called it now. My brain went black. Okay, again, only your platform. One cutting plate. Paper inside, open side goes in first, another cutting plate on top, and runner through. Look how easy that goes through, just like butter. And voila, we have an embossed image. I love the bingo card. Look what I did with it. Bingo, let's celebrate. You're going to be 48. I don't know anybody's going to be 48, but that was the number there. I should have done the 50. What if I can pick that off? Well, next card. So how fun is that? And back in the very beginning, that first embossing folder that I used, here it is on this. I just used scraps and made myself some banners. All right, let's do the next one. All right, here's our next one. This is from Doris. The same situation goes on for almost all of these. In fact, I think all of them except the Spellbinders embossibilities. Platform, cutting plate, folder with the paper inside, open in first, and this piece of paper is the coordination paper. I use that a lot with my embossing because I love that sanded look and getting the two-tone. Wait till you see the card. I absolutely love the card. So here are my little dog prints, and then what I would do is sand this. Now just a little reminder, when you sand this, if you're like me and you use your craft mat, do not sand on top of your craft mat because you will ruin it. So use a piece of glass or plexiglass. Check out this card. If your dog doesn't like somebody, maybe you shouldn't either. Is that too stinking cute or what? And there is a die cut, and this is from... Oh my goodness, I just forgot. I'll look it up. Memory box. Memory box. I finally found a black lab. Well, you could make it any color lab, but a lab that looks like my boy Odie. So there you go. Isn't that a great card? I know you love it. I do. Okay, next. Now, girls and guys, I made a little boo-boo. The Sizzix that I used before was not a Tim Holtz alteration, but this one is. And they're really, Sizzix is Sizzix. Sometimes Tim Holtz is a little more, um, a little more dimension to it or grunge kind of look to it. And sometimes it just embosses a little bit deeper. But you use the same exact um, sandwich. So we're going to use our platform. We're going to use our die cut plate. Our folder paper inside, open in first, another die cutting plate, and runner through. This is a really cool one when you want to do something for a guy. I don't know what they call these. I wish he'd put his name on there. I'm going to have to write Tim a note. Anyway, this kind of looks like, I don't know what it looks like, pebbles or I don't know what it is. But anyway, look what I did. But my grandson's loves to do his skateboards, so I made him a card and put that in the background and told him he shines. And then I did a little bit of the Copic marker underneath and the little stars. Do my own little thing there. So there you go. Let's go to another one. All right, this one is Crafts to You. Same thing. I know you're probably getting sick of hearing that, but the reason I'm doing that is because some folks might like skip fast forward to try and look for something, and I want them to know it's always going to be the same sandwich. Platform, cutting plate, paper inside, open in first, and another cutting plate. And the main thing is I want you to see how easy they do go through. I mean, I'm not straining my arms or having to grunt or anything to get to go through there. They're going through really nicely. So that's what's exciting. The companies have kind of really kind of worked together on that. Look how great that embossing is. Can you check that out? Now here's the card I did. Oops, a little bit of thread on there from me sewing. So there you go. Is that too stinking cute or what? And again, this is a die cut from Memory Box. So I just kind of cut it also using the switch. We'll get to that in another video and then layered it on there. So there you go. Let's do another one. We're almost done. 
All right, now this is one of the newer ones. It's called a picture embossing folder, and it's by Nellie Snellen. And hers work exactly the same way. So we're going to have our platform, one cutting plate, paper inside, another cutting plate on top, and roll her through. You know, sometimes you do a card and you love the embossing, but you don't like how it turned out because you messed things up. Well, the card I'm going to show you, I wasn't too happy because I didn't use the right kind of medium. But there's what I came up with. I was trying to color it with some watercolors, and well, watercoloring just isn't my thing, I guess. But you know, if I move real fast, you won't see what it looked like. Anyway, it gives you the idea that you can color these, and that's what hers are all about, is using those of you that can do really great stuff with your Copics or with your, um, oh spectrum markers, you can use your distress markers, all kinds of cool stuff. Anyway, there you go. Nellie Snellen. we got another couple more to show you. Now this one is by Embossalicious. I never say that quite right, but you girls and guys will get the idea. This is one of the bigger ones, and I just wanted to show you that it will fit through there. I did not make a card for this one, so you'll have to come up with your own creations and send them to me. The same exact thing. Platform, plate, folder paper, plate, and runner through. And there you go. So I'll just show you that it does emboss beautifully. So that would be a great front for a card. One of them that I've done in the past is I embossed it, and then I did take my distress markers and a watercolor pencil, or I'm sorry, a watercolor brush, and kind of painted some of the flowers, and it turned out really cool. Now, there is only one folder from one company that will not fit on your Big Shot, and that is the one from the Ebosser. Check these babies out. They're huge. Oh, my gosh. And as you can see... They won't fit. So you do have to use these on your embo uh, the embosser, which is another machine we're going to talk about later on. It is to die for. It's electric, so you don't have to crank. Just push stuff through. And they've got some really awesome giant folders, which I use these mostly for my scrapbooking pages when I do my big scrapbook pages and my life project. So, there you are. Well, that's everything I can show you for now on the Big Shot. Remember, stop over to CropStop.com. Everything I've shown you, they carry. They may not have some of the older embossing folders that I've used, but we have hundreds of embossing folders by lots of different companies. And make sure to tell them Peggy sent you. Have a good one. Bye.